Just like every other continent in the world, Antarctica boasts its own unique and complex climate. Knowing how the atmosphere works is important to our understanding of weather forecasting. Some Antarctic experiments record atmospheric data using spectrometers, lasers, radars, cameras, interferometers, radio receivers, and magnetometers. We also use balloons and rockets to reach higher areas of the atmosphere. If there's anything that anyone would know about Antarctica, it's probably how devastatingly cold it is. In fact, the warmest location on the entire continent is the northern part of the Antarctic Peninsula. Even then, however, temperatures remain close to freezing, even in the summer. During winter, temperatures near the coast range from negative 10 degrees Celsius to negative 30 degrees Celsius. But that's warm compared to inland temperatures. Thanks to higher elevation, it rarely gets above negative 20 degrees Celsius and can dip below negative 60 degrees Celsius in the winter. The lowest recorded temperature on Earth, measured in Vostok Station, clocked in at negative 89.2 degrees Celsius. Not only is Antarctica the coldest place on Earth, but it is also the windiest. Most places in Antarctica have a median wind speed of 6 meters per second. However, powerful gales can reach 40 meters per second. The windiest places of all experience windstorms exceeding 55 meters per second. An important type of wind commonly found in Antarctica and Greenland is called the Katabatic Wind. These are caused by the flow of cold air off the central plateau of the continent. Driven by gravity and blowing from the poles to the coast, they are the reason as to why the Antarctic coast is one of the windiest places in the world. South Pole winds are controlled by the snow surface's slope and manage to stay around 6 meters per second. While winds are rarely calm in Antarctica, they are also rarely violent. Up in the Antarctic sky, we can see a familiar sight, clouds. Despite the atmosphere being freezing, these clouds still contain water droplets and ice crystals. A special type of particle is needed to form an ice crystal, so some clouds at temperatures lower than freezing might be composed of mostly water droplets. Some other clouds are made up almost entirely of ice crystals. Antarctic clouds look similar to the ones at lower latitudes, and the coast of this vast continent is one of the cloudiest places in the world. Antarctica also hosts a few rare forms of clouds. Lenticular clouds tend to stack like plates. They form when there is a strong turbulence present. Over the Rocky Mountains, clouds like these have often been mistaken for UFOs. Nacreous clouds form in the ozone layer during the winter and are actually part of the chemistry that causes the ozone hole. Noctilucent clouds can only be seen after sunset and are located above the ozone layer. Given that Antarctica is a world locked in perpetual winter, we can't ignore snow. Snowflakes form in clouds that contain liquid droplets and ice crystals. They grow inside the clouds until they become large enough to fall. However, believe it or not, ice crystals are difficult to come by. Near the coast, several meters of snow falls each year, but it's different in the interior. Only a few centimeters fall, thus officially making Antarctica the world's largest desert. After snow falls, it is moved around by the catabatic winds. When snow first falls, it's not very dense. Over time, ice crystals grow, become denser, and transform into glacial ice. Aside from the everyday weather, there is also a lot of phenomena that occurs in the Antarctic. For example, it is sometimes so cold that water droplets can condense directly into ice crystals and fall from the sky. They can catch sunlight on a sunny day and sparkle like diamonds in the sky, called diamond dust. If the atmosphere is clear enough, the last bit of sunlight to go below the horizon can glow bright green or blue. The atmosphere acts like a prism to cause this green flash effect. Since the sun rises and sets so slowly near the south pole, this can last for hours near the equinox. There's also a phenomenon called the corona. When water droplets are near a cloud, pastel colors close to the sun and the moon appear. It's similar to what happens when a drop of oil lands in a water puddle. Antarctica's extreme conditions allow scientists to conduct research what would elsewhere be impossible or very expensive. It is an ideal location to study global warming, atmosphere and weather, earth sciences, meteorites, glaciers, and ocean circulation. From Antarctica, we can learn about the physical and chemical changes in the atmosphere and how they affect circulation, the ozone layer, and sea ice. There are some unique chemical processes that occur only above the poles which help us to learn about how our world is transforming. Investigations help us to discover what is changing because of natural causes and what is changing because of us. Astronomical observation is also great in Antarctica. It is so dry that there is little water vapor to interfere with observations. The temperature is so low that less infrared radiation is emitted from the ground. Antarctica also rises above much of the Earth's atmosphere, being on an ice sheet that is two miles thick, giving some of the best views of the cosmos. Being that Antarctica is so cold, dry, and windy, it's incredibly similar to Mars. Using this continent, we can learn more about space travel and how to better set up colonies on other planets. It is essentially the final frontier on Earth and the gateway into what is the true final frontier, space. <laughs>